In this video, we'll go over a very simple example of creating a vendor bill. And to do that, we'll start in our purchasing application. We'll create a new purchase order. We'll select our vendor, which is going to be vendor one. We can have our order deadline, our expected arrival date, but more importantly, we can add our products below. So I'm gonna do our product two, which is our average cost product. And just as a quick reference point, if we go into our average cost product, we can see that our average cost right now is $30. And if we go into our product category where all of our accounting settings are held, we see that our costing method is average cost and inventory valuation is set to automated. And the reason why I'm pointing this out is because uh, depending on whether we are automated or manual inventory valuation, our journal items will look a little bit different. Um, essentially, we'll be utilizing our stock interim received account and our um, inside of our vendor bill so that we can create a stock move inside of inventory that will hit our stock interim received account and then we will offset it in our vendor bill. So we'll take a look at that as well. So let's go back to our PO, PO number 20. And now what I'm going to do is just take a look at our other information here. We have our buyer. This can be um, set as a default on our product level, but because I've created this manually, I'm going to be the default buyer here. We have our source document. If there was a source document of how this RFQ is generated, payment terms, these payment terms would have automatically been pulled from our vendor if we had them set as well as our fiscal position. All right, so let's just simply create or confirm this order, which generates a confirmed purchase order. So the RFQ change, the state change from RFQ to purchase order, and it generated a, rec a receipt so that we can receive these products in. So I'll simply va validate this receipt. This receipt validation created a journal entry based on our stock moves because we are in automated inventory valuation. And if we look at our valuation, we'll click on this little book here, which will bring us to our journal entry. And we'll see that we credited our stock interim received, which decreased the value in our stock interim received, which is an asset account. And we debited our stock valuation automated account, which uh, will increase our stock valuation for that product category. Now the stock interim received has a negative balance in it. And when we create the vendor bill, it's going to offset this stock interim received by debiting the stock in term received and crediting our account payable. So let's go back to our PO. And now what we'll do is create a bill right from here. One thing to keep in mind is that if I go to my request for quotations and I have two bills that I wanna create an invoice for or rather a bill for, I can select multiple bills and click on create bills at the top of our screen. For now, I'll just do one and we'll create the bill manually from here. So I created the bill. What comes over from our purchase order is our default uh, vendor. If we had any payment terms, those will automatically be set. We have our accounting date here, the date of the bill that we, in which we received. If we go to the other information tab here, something to note is that uh, we can have this auto post at a specific date. So if I had my accounting date set to let's say the 31st, and I want to leave this in draft mode, but maybe um, have it post at a particular time, we can set this auto post to a specific date. This to check icon will just bring up a, a check box on our journal in our accounting application, just so that we can come back to it or someone else can come back to it to look at anything that was created and verify that everything is accurate. Our journal items here, as I mentioned, we are debiting our stock interim received account for $30, the total value that we paid. And then we have our accounts payable account, which will be credited so that we can collect or that we, so that we can pay our vendor that $30 for our purchase order. So now what I'm going to do is set a bill date, which is required. I'll set the bill date to today. And we can simply confirm this at the top of our screen. Now confirming this just creates a posted journal entry inside of accounting. Right now I came to this screen from the purchase application but I am actually in accounting, and that's the power of Odoo. We can go from one module to the next. So we can look at this bill if we go to our dashboard from accounting. And one thing to know is that we mark this as to check. So you see on our vendor bills dashboard, we have one item to check. So going into our vendor bills, 
Well, let's go actually from our two check. So we can click on one to check and that will filter down from the top of our screen, our filter bar, items to check. And if we look at that, it's going to say to check is set. So that's going to automatically filter down anything that we mark to check. So in here, we can come in and set this as check, which will remove our to check box at the bottom of our screen and also record that in the chatter. The next thing we're going to look at is registering a payment, but we'll wait for our next video to do that. The last thing I want to mention is that if I create a purchase order in purchasing, actually let's duplicate our existing order that we just created. And just for the purposes of this uh, demonstration, I'll leave this like, we'll do two units here. And I'll confirm this order and receive our units in. Now, oftentimes, uh, companies won't come into our purchase application and create a bill. Rather, we'll wait for our vendor to send us a bill or they'll send it with the shipment. We'll input it into the system and we want to match it to our purchase order. And we can do that very easily inside of accounting. When I go to my vendor bills and create a new vendor bill here, I may elect to upload our bill, but we'll look at that in another video. But what we can do simply here is on this autocomplete, we can select the purchase order that we're processing. So we'll select that purchase order. It'll autofill our items from our purchase order. And we'll see at the top of our screen, our purchase order smart button appears and links us right to that bill. So now I can set a bill date here and confirm our order. And if I go back to our purchase application, the vendor bill that we just, or the purchase order we just created now has a vendor bill attached to it. So just by selecting it from accounting, we can match the two up. And there's going to be other added benefits like looking at our three-way matching um, and as well as our OCR technology to connect these two pieces and records. But we'll talk about that again in another video. So the next video, we're going to go over registering a payment. So let's do that.